Kayla and Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw's new game, White Eagle Defiant. This game lasts 60 minutes. It's a two-player game. Solitaire suitability is very high. And stay tuned because I will have Ryan and Dave on an in conversation talking about this very game. Hello, this is Riccardo Masini and this week's greatest day in history and games is September 17th, 1862. The bloodiest day in American military history, the day of the Battle of Antietam. So, we are back in the Civil War, and as often happen, happens with stories related to the Civil War, we begin with General Lee, engaged in the first of his invasions of Northern Territory. His objective is Maryland, a slave owned state that Lee hoped could join the Confederacy at the passage of his army of Northern Virginia. Two things will spoil Lee's plan. First, Maryland citizens, while impressed, decided not to secede from the Union, at least not until a clear victory in the field against the Union army. Second, Lee's general plans for the offensive will be found by a northern soldier wrapped in the cigar envelope left behind by a southern officer. Now, Union leaders knew that the Confederate army was quite dispersed, with General Jackson busy capturing the federal arsenal of Harpers Ferry. However, one thing will almost make Lee's plan succeed. The commanding general of Union forces, yes, George B. McClellan. As usual, the strategic maneuvers by McClellan were very well organized, but painfully slow. After traditionally losing precious time, McClellan emerged from the Blue Ridge Mountains and finally hit Lee's army first at South Mountain and then near the town of Schausburg. The element of total surprise was lost, but even then Union forces greatly outnumbered the army of Northern Virginia. McClellan attacked in segments, not really coordinating all his corps at once, but exerting a tremendous pressure on, co on Confederate defenders. Names like the Cornfield, Burnside Bridge, the Sunken Road, later known as the Bloody Lane, still resonate today with a tragic echo of violence and lost lives. What followed will become the greatest massacre of the Civil War, with more than 23 thousands dead and wounded soldiers on both sides. At the end of the day, after entire sectors of the battlefield changed hands for many times, McClellan did not use his last reserves to deliver the killing blow to the southern forces. Lee's desperate but well-conducted defense allowed him to escape the trap, leaving the battered Union army in possession of the field. The outcome of the battle is still today debated by military historians being actually a draw. The invasion of Maryland was stopped, but the army of Northern Virginia could still fight another day. But the real winner of the battle was not even present that day and was not a military man. President Lincoln skillfully used this marginal success to gain political leverage and finally announced the Emancipation Proclamation that would end slavery everywhere in the Union and Confederacy alike. With this difficult but morally incontestable decision, Lincoln prevented any European country from recognizing the Confederacy and made possible the eventual enlistment of 180,000 Afro-American soldiers. Such an important matter is well represented in the Grammy Award by many excellent titles. Today, I want to speak about one of the more recent, Antietam 1862, by Warden Publishing. The game is the first title of the Civil War Brigade Battle series, a very essential new set of founded on simple mechanics, not unlike our dear old SPI and our O'Neill classics. Most of all, the units have strength points that determine the actual fighting value. These points will gradually degrade under the enemy fire, creating a surprisingly convincing simulation of the attritional nature of the engagements. 
it will be then necessary to well coordinate artillery offensive and defensive supports, the maintenance of a cohesive position and chain of command, the arrival of reserves, and the timely use of fresh troops at decisive points. The game features three smaller scenarios, playable in one to two hours, and one great overall battle scenario, encompassing the entire battle. And when you left out uh, enough time at Antinum, well, we, you can also try the second title of the series, Shiloh, 1862. Even though there are small issues and the radars promptly answered by the autos on Bog and Geek, the system is quite good and there is a flashingly simple rendition of Civil War engagements. I am actually eager to see its new titles in the future. So, that's it for this week, see you on the next Battlefields, ciao! The pre-orders at GMT 1918-1919 Storm in the West. This is a new GMT version of Ted Racer's classic operational late World War II game. And the components are one back printed 22 by 34 inch map, one and one half 5 8 inch sheets of counters, four play rate cards, rule booklets, and two six-sided die. Time scale, one half month per turn, the map scale is 8 miles per hex, unit scale are cores, and the length is 4 hours. And you know what? Let me read some customer reviews about the game that's not even out yet. And Joel says, The dead ball graphics? You can't be serious. And Marie says, The skeletons on the map are rather disturbing. And Matthias says, I'd like to see a mountain board with this one. Also, a Time for Trumpets, The Battle of the Bulge, December 1944, Bruno Senegalio's monster game on the Battle of the Bulge. Okay, Bruno's not messing around with the components here. The components are five full-size maps, 12 counter sheets, rule booklet, scenario booklet, six player aids, at least six player aids, and two dice. What, they went on the cheap of the dice? Time scale, four turns per day. Map scale, one mile per hex. Ground unit scale, battalion. Air unit scale, 25 aircraft per counter. And number of players, 2 to 5. Complexity is high. Solitaire suitability is medium high. Apocalypse Road. Jeff Horgers. Thunder Alley Series racing game number 3. This time with weapons. Think Car Wars, but GMT. Chad Jensen's 2 to 4 player sequel to one of the best selling games in the GMT catalog, Dominant Species, Marine. And Mo of Mo's Game Table takes a look at Red Poppies, Campaign Volume 3, Assault Artillery, from Compass Games. And the Hugh Hefner of War Games, Wardy Robe, does World War III, Team Yankee, he builds 08, or I should say number 8, the Lynx. I don't know what that means, but it's a helicopter. The Gimpy Gamer and Gimpy's Gal guesses Stellar Horizons from Compass Games. Callandale gives us his review of Grant Takes Command. Hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to the Centurions Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This week on our website, we're doing two things. First is a real quick review of Fight Your Friends. It's a uh, deck building game that's very simple, maybe a little bit too simple. And the next thing we're doing 
is the Avalon Hill General Magazine put out the index and company history many years ago. I just took a look through it and pulled out uh, 10 interesting facts about the history of Avalon Hill and just writing a little article about it. So I'll check that out on my website next week. And then on YouTube, the first game we're doing a first look at is Hitler's War from Avalon Hill. Very interesting looking game. I've never played it. This is probably second or third time I've owned it. Hopefully this time I'll actually get a chance to try it. But it looks cool. All right, and then from SPI, we have Paratroop. It's actually three games in one. They're all airborne assaults. You got Even a Mile. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Crete and Red Devils. All three of the scenarios uh, have different rules, and they're very short rules. It's like three page, three or four pages of rules for each one, so it looks like each one will be very easy to learn. I've heard good things about this game. And then we have West Front from Columbia Games. This is the war in Europe from 1943 to 1945. It's a block game uh, where you put stickers on the blocks. And what's cool about the blocks is you can have up to four steps on a block. So unlike standard counters where you can only have two, you can have up to four. So that's cool. So hopefully one day I'll get a chance to try this. Looks like it's a long game, but hopefully it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys soon on our website and on our YouTube channel. Have a good evening. Gentlemen of the Players Aid are unboxing Unhappy King Charles, the English Civil War. I think this is an oldie from GMT. And also reviewing third edition Storms of Steel from Academy Games. On Little Wars TV, five big ideas to grow historical wargaming. Jim Ozarski and Blucher's Battles. Round two. Part 2. And the chief of bonding with board games has been busy. One ham tag top 5 fantasy flight games. Fantasy flight, not fantasy flight. Fantasy flight. Also, he interviews Thomas and Shaw. Part 2 of Avalon Hill with his play by mail idea, I guess. Also, unboxing Hunnenspieler's Mark Herman's Ribbit. I always wanted to get that game. And he's also unboxing One Small Step from Academy Games. Swordsman's War Gamer goes way back in time to Victory Games and unboxes Tokyo Express. Also, part two of the Doolittle Raid in the series Enemy Coast Ahead by Jerry M. White. Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. Dan Panduco has asked me to run down what has appeared on Ardwolf's Lair this week, so here we go. It has been an extremely busy week. We started off on Sunday with Vietnam 1965-75. to We ran through two sessions of the Operation Starlight introductory scenario for this classic operational Vietnam game. On Tuesday, we began the week's Blitzkrieg of unboxing video. So the reason is that I got a Ardwolf Slayer mat to do unboxings on. It looks fantastic, but this does mean that I have to get rid of the entire large backlog of unboxing videos that were filmed before I got it. So we started off on Tuesday with... GMT's new release from Gregory M. Smith, Beneath the Med. This is another entry in the very popular system first released with the Hunters. It is Italian submarines in World War II. It looks very interesting. 
You will get to see the new map in Wednesday's unboxing of Last Stand, a new release from MMP in their international series. This is the Battle for Moscow from late 1941 to early 1942. It's a very nice looking game. On Thursday, we did a war game unboxing of GMT's new release, Storm Over Asia. This is from designer Bruce Harper, and it is the Pacific prequel to their monster World War II strategic level game, A World at War. So you will now be able to combine this with A World at War and with Game gathering storm for a complete 1935 to 1945 experience. A little bit later on Thursday, we did a flip through of Paladin Warriors of Charlemagne. This is a relatively new release, not super new, from Chaosium. It is kind of a companion RPG to their classic King Arthur Pendragon RPG from Greg Stafford. Just as Pendragon allows you to play Arthur's Knights, Paladin allows you to play the Knight Companions of Charlemagne. It's pretty neat, so if you find that interesting, please do check it out. On Friday, we unboxed or unsleeved C3i number 33. This is the most recent issue of C3i magazine that is available. It is the one that contains Mark Herman's Operational Waterloo campaign game. And as is typical for C3i, it contains a large array of other goodies as well. So check that out. And more or less at the same time you're probably watching this video, I will have released an unboxing video of Ron. This is a volume in GMT's Great Battles of History series dealing with battles in Japan. And I was pretty excited to get it because it's one of the last pieces that I need to complete that series. The unboxing Blitzkrieg will continue next week, so don't consider this a complete rundown of what will appear next week. But we're going to start off on Sunday morning with an unboxing of Shiloh 1862. This is a game that we have done some playthrough content of on the channel already, so check that out. We did end up liking Shiloh quite a bit better than we liked the Antietam game, more or less for scenario-related reasons. So check out the unboxing, the long-delayed unboxing of this release from Worthington Games, and this is a 2020 release. Later on Sunday, departing from our usual start time at 5 p.m. Eastern, we are going to do another tutorial session of a slightly larger scenario of Vietnam 1965-75, the classic Vietnam game from Nick Carp and Victory Games. So if you'd like to get a inside look at this classic title, please do tune into that video at 5 p.m. Eastern. And then at some point later in the week, we will be doing an unboxing of Napoleon Retreats, a relatively recent game in the Library of Napoleonic Battle series from the Operational Studies Group and designer Kevin Zucker. It is extraordinarily likely that there will be additional unboxing videos released next week as I work through the backlog. I'm hoping to get through that backlog next week. I'd like to thank Dan Pandapney for allowing me to talk about what's happening on Ardwolf's Lair. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming. And Jan Heinemann has been a busy guy across the pond playing Fields of Glory 2, also Fields of Glory Empires. He's unbagging Battles Magazine number 14, Storm Over Madrid. Also plays a Strategic Command World War II War in Europe computer game and Imperiums Greek Wars. Jan Heinemann, ladies and gentlemen, Jan Heinemann. And with great production value, seek out and play! Tells us how to play Warfighter PMC gameplay. Thanks, Seek. And the wise guy, Nathan, gives us a rules primer number two on the company scale system. Also, war games in Board Game Geek's Top 50, 2010 to 2020. And GMT are doing more of these how-to videos, which is greatly appreciated. And this one is How to Play Congress of Vienna Part 1. Game setup through preparing the diplomacy table. You want to know what's happening on the big board? I'll tell you what's happening on the big board. Kevin Bigman, CEO, plays Panzer Battles. SCS opening turns, number one, and also continues on another video with, obviously, Panzer Battles because he's continuing... Number two, Julius Fairfax has taken a look at Verdun 1916, Steel Inferno. And Marco Omni Gamer is on a bit of a war game tear this week, in which he takes a look and reviews Storm Over Madrid in Battles Magazine. Also, 1815 Napoleon Returns review from Worthington Publishing. And I guess that's that. I made a mistake. No, only two vids. Sorry. 
and Kilroy was here with a video of D-Day at Tara or to clip or not to clip. That is the question. Wayne Hansen has been busy. He is unboxing or reconning Rostov 41, Race to the Dawn by MMP. Also, Let's Play Viking, Scourge of the North, a folio game by Decision Games, and Crusader Kingdoms, The War for the Holy Land. Compass Games and John Krantz was live with episode 40. And Matt White, the war game artist, gives us two videos this week. One on Hold Fast Pacific 1941 to 1945. This is a review of a Worthington publishing game and also a GMT published game by Chad Jensen called Fighting Formations. Gross Deutschland Armored Infantry Division. Steve Dolges has an interesting video called Design Diary, number zero, in want of a game. Kyle Seeley is back after a short stint, and here he looks at 2004 Decision Games version of SBI's War Between the States. Also, Kyle gives us his thoughts on the struggle of nations, an old Avalon Hill. Pop is back with a Warhammer 40k 9th edition recruit starter set unboxing. And a man who goes by the name of Jeff plays Imperial Struggle. It's a playthrough with rules parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. And on Swearnet.com, the trailer park boys, that is Bubbles, finds a railroad tie, an anvil, and freaks out Ricky why the band Anvil was called Anvil. And on Tony's board life, he plays Field Commander Rommel and tells us how not to win. I'm way ahead of you there. On a productive games in a video called Esa Resultat Gameplay 1, French versus Russians, pick a battle. Check it out, great miniatures. The soft-spoken but formidable foe! Jonathan Townsend is back with a Balkowski game, a Joe Balkowski game from 1988 called Lee versus Grant, the Wilderness Campaign of 1864. What you just saw there was, was a code. You go to Dan Verson's webpage and you say, hey, or you call him, write him an email, whatever. And you say, hey, I'm typing in N-E-H 25. And that gives you 25% off. Even when Dan himself does the sales, 20% max. Write this code, 25%. All right? Tell him I sent you. Don't let that rough exterior fool you. He's a sweetheart. The OG plays the Battle of Denovitz, part four. And combat board games unboxes a game, an old game, a victory point game called Open Fire, Solitaire Tank Combat and World War II, of which I have and of which I've never played. Yes, shame on me. And Ben Harsh of Harsh Rules Breaking Down Board Games plays part two of the War Room, the phase sequence, one to three. And if you're like me, sometimes at night you wake up and what do you do? You can't go back to sleep. So you watch cult cinema classics. Yes, that is a website where you can watch old and forgotten movies like The Brain from Planet Arrows or Tobor the Great. Yes, that's right. A game for gamers, made by gamers, by Flying Pig Games. Soirée de danse de, de demoiselles 
and all that pompous ass stuff, man. Anyways, look. What I'm trying to do here is have an open mic. Ask anything you want. Anything. Except one thing. War games. We ain't gonna talk about war games. Eh, it's about me. Eh, it's about me. Me. You can ask about me. Music, fountain pens, uh, speakers, wet up a beer, wine. Eh. Okay, war games is fine too. And you know what? Bring a little drink, a little cake and coffee, this and that. You're invited to my house at Chateau. No enemies here. And we'll spend an hour just, just frolicking in the grass, naked. And anybody who likes the player's aid, you guys stay away. I'll see you next Wednesday, or I'll see you Wednesday whenever you're watching this, at 6.30. Au revoir! Sarah, une soirée formidable! Hey guys, Dave again. I'm selling a copy of Avalon Hill Stalingrad Campaign in Russia from 1941 to 1945. It's a player's copy. It's unpunched. It looks like it's missing a few counters, but I, I'm pretty sure it's still playable. Uh, the corners have been taped on it. Here's the counters here. Most of them are here. I think a few are missing. Uh, I'll show you on the tree here. I think pretty much everything's here except for these ones that they call spare. Other than that, I think they're all there. And then you got the time record. The time record's been written on with pencil. Weather tables here. And a little advertisement for strategy and tactics. Here's the combat results table and it's also if you can't figure out odds on your own, it's got a table down here to help you. The original postcard. Advertisement for Avalon Hill. And here's the battle manual. And the regular instructions. As you can see, it's only like four pages of rules, so it doesn't take much to learn this game. And here's the map here. It's in two segments. There's the first. And here's the second. I am charging $25 with free shipping on this. Might have to make a few counters or something, but you should be able to play it and have a good time. I mean, $25 on this uh, with free shipping is actually a pretty good price. So anyhow, if you're interested in getting it, I will have a link to where you can purchase it. Or if you have any questions, I will have my email address on the screen so you can contact me. Thanks and have a good evening. Another week, another show. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. If you're watching this, just click on subscribe. Subscribe! And like. And yeah, you that one guy who always gives me thumbs down. Give me a thumb down. And, um, you know, life is good. Lots of mushrooms are happening. I know you guys think I'm doing mushrooms. Yeah, I'm doing mushrooms. I'm frying the mushrooms. I eat the mushrooms, man. I'm having a good time. I'm just ha slap happy stupid all the time like this. It it's, uh, has nothing to do with uh, psychedelics. Anyways, please support this channel. It helps very much. And as a matter of fact, it helps very much. Yes, it does. And look, have a great week.
Have a great weekend. The Charlies are coming up. I know. I know. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. They're coming up. We're working on it. Working on it. All right. Be good. And, uh, and be good. Ciao. Isn't that crazy? Crazy? <laughs> You're all crazy. You shut up. Shut up! You know Herman? Hey guys, it's Herman Lutman. Herman's crazy. Herman Lutman. Yeah. Why? Because it is. Invaders from Dimension X. Huh? And look at that. Tiny Battle Publishing. They're even crazier. You know why? Because they publish this crazy game. It takes one to know one. And what does that mean? <laughs> so. This is set in the 1950s, right? And you're on Brea 7, and you're a marine, and you're digging something. All of a sudden, a wormhole happens. <laughs> and aliens come through. It's an invasion of the chaos. The what? The chaos. The what? What do you do? What do you do? First of all, you have fun. It's a solo game. You play as the marines, and you try, try to take over the chaos. Basically, the game is you start on one side of the map and you try to get over the other side of the map with obstacles and the chaos. And the chaos, what happens? They spawn anywhere, different times, different spawn abilities, different attack abilities, and one of them is they fall asleep. So you shoot them when they're asleep! But you might not have any bullets. What happens? Well, you play another game from Dream Team designers Herman Lutton and Fred Manzo. You play Space Vermins from Beyond! This time, the 124th Galactic Marines, which is the same guys as Invasions from Dimension X, a crash on a planet. And what's there? Bugs! Lots of bugs! With a queen! And they bury, uh, they bury underground, they got tunnels, and you're on top, and you're at the bottom. What's going on? One map, one side of the map, to the other side of the map. Save the world from the bugs. I don't like bugs. I want to squish them with a stone. Well, you burnt toast. How are you going to do that? Well, this time, you're on Graviton Prime, and you're a miner, and you're deep underground. And the stones start moving. They're stone monsters. What do you do? You run away. The people will survive, but you get the 124th Galactic Marines to the savior. To, to the savior. You know what I'm saying. Basically, same game, stone monsters, there's cards this time, different mechanics at play. The marines do the same thing, maybe have different capabilities, armor or, or, or vehicles, stuff like that. This is part three of, of a trilogy. Fantastic dream team, Herman Lutman, Fred Manzo. Tiny Battle Publishing. They're all solo games. Some can be played two pe uh, two people. These games go for, go for like like twenty bucks, I think. Great introduction into conflict.
type thing, and a lot of fun, based on the 1950s. Fun. Fun! You want to be my friend? Podfather. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up!